Hello. In this demo, we'll be showing you how to use Semantic Kernel and PromptFlow together to build a Copilot experience. Often, when you're building a Copilot, you want to be able to give your LLM some extra capabilities, some superpowers that it natively doesn't have. For example, being able to perform some basic math. We all know that LLMs aren't great at math, and so in this demo, we'll be showing how to use Semantic Kernel and PromptFlow to give your Copilot these extra capabilities. By using some of the skills inside of this demo, you'll be able to give your LLM other abilities, like being able to talk to your docs, talk to APIs to get data, or even automatically complete requests on behalf of a user. So let's go ahead and get started. What you're looking at right now is a blank Visual Studio project. And I'm starting here because I want to show just how easy it is to get started with PromptFlow. We'll go ahead and open up our terminal. And we'll use the PromptFlow CLI in order to create our first flow. And if you're not familiar with what flows are, flows are basically the, the basic endpoints that you'll be creating and consuming inside of your AI applications to give AI capabilities. In this case, we're going to build the main flow that will be used to power our Math Copilot. So let's go ahead and name it Math Copilot. And because we are creating a chat experience, um, we're going to go ahead and ask for a chat type flow. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And what PromptFlow will do is create all of the folders and files that are necessary for me to have my first flow. The most important file is this flow.dag.yaml file that describes all of the inputs for our endpoint and the outputs of our endpoint and all of the logic, all the nodes in the middle that power our AI capability. Now, if you're not a fan of looking at YAML, if you use the Visual Studio extension for PromptFlow, they also have this button that is enabled that you can click that shows a visual representation of your PromptFlow. This one's pretty simple so far. We have our input, uh, this, this chat node that we'll talk about in a bit, and our output. We do have one error, and if we look inside of uh, this view on the left, we can see the problem is it's expecting some sort of connection. And I can set the connection by selecting uh, the connection that I have locally. Uh, this is a connection that's managed by PromptFlow. And what's great about that is I don't have to manage things like secrets for my Azure OpenAI service. PromptFlow manages that for me. So now that I have the error fixed, I can go ahead and start testing this flow and seeing what the Copilot experience is like from the default generated files. I'll go ahead and click on this Run All button and ask it to run in interactive mode. If you don't want to use the extension, you can use the CLI. You can actually see what the test command looks like for PromptFlow uh, in order to test this particular experience. So let's go ahead and give this a whirl. We can do some basic conversation like, hello, uh, my name is Matthew. We can even test that it remembers things. Uh, what is my name? Pretty cool stuff, right? This experience is really built so that you can easily test your chat experience whenever you would like. We can also start asking it some math questions like what is two plus two? This is pretty simple, so it should be able to get it. But if we start asking more complex questions like uh, this crazy number times another crazy number, it won't necessarily get it right. It'll get close. We can see what the actual answer is by going to our trusted calculator, right? It gets close, but it, it's already off at the thousandths number. And so what we now want to do is be able to update our flow so we can ground it with the right information. And we're going to give the LLM the power of performing math with semantic kernel so that it can actually get that right answer. So without further ado, let's see how we can bring a semantic kernel into this existing flow. Now it's pretty simple. What we first need to do is add a new node that can run Python code for us so that we can actually call semantic kernel. To do that, either I can go into our YAML file and I can actually add in a new node and create a new file, or I can use the visual editor that comes with PropFlow that makes it a little bit easier for me. So I've just clicked on this plus button. I want to select Python tool since I want to create a new Python node. And I want to give it the name Math Planner uh, since this is going to create a plan for us and provide an answer to a math problem. It's 
it's going to create a new file for us, which we can see on the left. And if we look at it, it's basically a, a very simple Python file with a method that we can start overriding. We can put any arbitrary Python code here. And in our case, we're going to be adding semantic kernel code. Now, I'm not going to code on the fly. You don't want to see me debug things. So I want to go ahead and copy and paste uh, for my final solution so you can see what a full completed Python node should look like. Now, at the very beginning, we are going to go ahead and import our math plugin. Again, plugins are the things that give your AI superpowers. We have an error here since we need to actually bring in our math plugin. Thankfully, I've already written that, so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that as well. And just to see, just to better understand what plugins are, plugins are basically just a set of functions or APIs that you can give to an AI so that they can complete a user's request. In our example, it's just a bunch of math functions like performing a square root or add, subtract, multiply. In your own application, it might be calling an API or getting some more information from a doc or even completing a task, right? You can basically have your AI do anything a computer can do. And to help the AI actually use your functions, we have these decorators that allow us to semantically describe the function. So for example, in this add function, we, we tell the AI that this function adds two numbers together, and we expect two inputs, the first number to add and the second number to add. Very basic stuff. And in your own application, your inputs might be something like filter to use for your API request or the ID of a product that you want to search for. And this will be enough information for the AI to actually create a plan and call your APIs on behalf of you. So this is our function we can now use within semantic kernel. Because we've semantically described it, we can now use it in semantic kernel. So let's go back to our math planner node. We then add in a bunch of ports from semantic kernel, which we're going to use, and a few from prompt flow, most notably the tool decorator, which basically tells prompt flow that this entire function can be used as a node. We also are leveraging the connections from prompt flow so that when I'm adding LLMs, adding AI to my semantic kernel, I don't have to deal with secrets. Instead, I can just use the connection object. So the rest of this is very basic semantic kernel code. And if you're not familiar with semantic kernel, that is totally OK. I'll walk you through how it works. In this first line, we're creating a new kernel called math kernel. We're adding an AI service or chat completion service. Again, we're using those details from that connection object. And then the real magic starts to happen with semantic kernel when we start adding those plugins, those superpowers that our AI can use. So here we import the math plugin. And then we start creating what's called a planner. And by its name, it creates a plan using the plugins given to it that can solve a user's request. In this case, we're asking it to solve the user's math problem. And we ask the planner to go ahead and create a plan to address that. Once we have a plan, we can then run the plan, perform it. And I have some debugging print statements so that we can actually see what the plan is and, and what it does. And finally, and finally, we return back from this node the answer to that math question. So that is our semantic kernel logic. Now what we need to do is actually wire things up. We need to make sure our dangling math planner is actually used inside of our prompt flow. Again, if I wanted to, I could edit the YAML, but it's a little bit easier for me to, and better demoware, frankly, to use the visual editor. So let's go ahead and set our question. We can already see a line being drawn. We'll go ahead and use HTTP 3.5 Turbo. And again, we're going to set our connection. Now, the one last thing we need to do before actually testing it is we need to take the answer of our semantic kernel planner and give it to uh, our chat uh, prompt, right? And our chat prompt uh, is defined by this Jinja file. It takes the history, prints it out, and it has the user's question. What we want to do is then provide a answer, system answer, from semantic kernel so that the AI can correctly respond back to the user's question. 
Um, so now that we've added this new property, we can go back to our flow diagram file and go to our chat node and add the answer from the math planner. I want to go ahead and save. We can see it all wired up. This is looking pretty great. Now we can test it, right? So we can go back to our terminal, run the test command, and start asking some basic things like what is two plus two? It should get this right. It got it right the last time. But what you notice is now it's using the planner and we can see those print statements that I added earlier. The planner was smart enough to use the add function to add those two numbers together. And if we give it the question that it failed at last time, we can put that in there. And it is smart enough to multiply these two numbers and give us the right answer. So let's go ahead and copy that in. And it's uh, 363, 363, and even gets the decimal points right. So at this point, we now have something that is basically a smart calculator. We have our math copilot. If you wanted to deploy it, that is fairly simple as well. Promptflow has several different ways of deploying. You can either do it locally, you can create a Docker container. If you're using Azure, we of course recommend deploying it to your Azure ML Studio. But just to show you what it's like to deploy it locally, uh, we can go ahead and copy and paste this command line, run it, and it'll again spin up a, a UI for us so that we can start talking to it, right? Very similar to what we had before. But what's probably more useful as a developer is this also stands up a endpoint for you to start testing inside of your application so that you can start adding those AI capabilities into your app. So if I come over to Postman, I can post to this local server that was stood up for me by PropFlow and start testing it and integrating it inside of my application. Now at this point, we're pretty good. We could deploy this. We could start using it in our application. But the risk is for me to actually know if this math planner works and, and the plugins work, I have to do a lot of manual testing in either the terminal or the application that was spun up for me. So this is where prompt evaluations start to come in, start to help you make sure that what you create with AI actually works, actually can handle the breadth of questions that your users will, will have. Now to do evaluations, we first need to start with benchmark data. So I've gone ahead and already created some benchmark data. We'll go ahead and copy and paste that into our project. And we can start seeing what this benchmark data looks like. This is in a data.json line file. If you're not familiar, each line is basically a JSON object. And I've created these objects with a bunch of math problems and the answer, the actual ground truth of what the answer is. And once I have this benchmark data, I can now go into prompt flow and use their CLI. I want to just cheat and, and copy and paste this command. And this will allow me to run my flow, my chat flow, and then see what the output looks like. This is called a batch run. So we'll give it a, a second for it to actually run since it's actually having to call each one of those individually. But once it's done, you can visualize and see the results, show details of our run. It looks like most of these are right, but you can imagine that if I have tens or hundreds of these benchmarks, having to go through each one of these lines to actually see like, did it get it right? Was it wrong? Was it what, what happened? What failed? It can be very, very time consuming. And so the other feature that PromptFlow provides is what they call evaluation flows. You can actually build an entirely new flow that will look at the outputs of your original flow and compare it to that ground truth. And this is really powerful because in this particular example, the answers that are being outputted by our LLM are a bunch of words. We need some sort of way of extracting the final answer so that we can compare it to the ground truth that we've provided. And to do that, we can use LLMs inside of this evaluation flow to do this for us. So I wanna go back to my final solution. I, I have an evaluation flow already that I wanna go ahead and copy and paste. And we can take a look at what this flow looks like. 
So if we go to the visual editor, we can see we are getting the two inputs, the ground truth and what was predicted previously. The first node is getting that answer outside of this output. We can see what that prompt looks like here. We provide some examples and say, hey, extract that answer from the question. And then we have what's called a line process that actually will take a look at it and, and start scoring our results. If they are close enough, it'll go ahead and give us a one, which is good, uh, or a negative one if it's bad. And then finally, we summarize all of this data so that we can create metrics. So we can actually measure the accuracy and the error rate of our flow over time. So we have our evaluation flow. We've already had one batch run. And so we can, what we can do is, again, go back to the CLI to evaluate our batch run. So I'll go ahead and paste this in. Go ahead and update these numbers. So we're uh, on the right thing. I'll go ahead and click enter. And again, it's running this evaluation flow over all these different things so that we can ultimately get an output. I can view the output here and it looks like this time all of them were right except for the first one. We, we had some sort of problem there. And if I wanted to, I could also ask to get the metrics back. And here it shows us that the accuracy was 90% and we didn't have any errors. Now, if I was curious about this first one and, and, and what went wrong, what I could do is actually get a visual of all of my runs inside of this batch. To do that, uh, either I can use a CLI, or in this case, what I want to do is I want to use the prompt flow extension. I want to select the last batch run and ask to visualize it. And what this does is create a very small local web page that allows me to see all of the different runs we can actually click on them and see all the different nodes. So for first one, apparently something was wrong with it. Uh, I can click on it and I can start seeing what happened at each of the steps. We can go to the output and it says that the answer is six. And if we actually drilled into the logs, which we can view here, we can see what it did is it tried to do some subtraction before finally trying to multiply. So the planner got really confused when it was trying to calculate how many sheep there would be. And so what this tells me is I need to do a better job of either describing my functions or providing hints to the planner. Or what I can do is actually, I can actually update uh, which model it used. So I'm using GPT-35 Turbo, and if I really want this thing to be really good, I could also upgrade it to GPT-4. So I'll go ahead and hit Save. And for me to see how much this actually improved things, all I would have to do is go back to our terminal and rerun those uh, functions, right? The run batch, so I can create a new batch. I can then run an evaluation. And then we can look at our outputs. And this time, GTP4 was able to correctly create a plan for all of these different questions so that we get the right answer. And so that concludes our demo. Hopefully you learned quite a bit about PromptFlow and Semantic Kernel, and you feel empowered to build your own co-pilots. Now, when you're building your own, you can probably follow most of these steps to a T. And really, all you really need to do is instead of creating a math planner, you might want to create a planner that grabs your own specific data or your own APIs in order to complete a user's request and facilitate that back and forth conversation with that user. Alrighty. Well, thank you. Cheers.